Hello, this is a video covering the goodness of fit test. So what is a goodness of fit test? A goodness of fit test is actually used to test the hypothesis that an observed frequency distribution fits or conforms to some sort of claim distribution. So what does this test exactly good for? Well, one thing you could do is say you have a friend and you think your friend decided to create a weighted or a loaded die meaning the die will always land on five or may always land on three, whatever side the die is weighted towards. You can actually use this test to determine if that die is fair or if it actually truly is loaded or weighted. So the requirements for this test are that the data have been randomly selected. The sample data consists of frequency counts for each of the different categories. And for each category, the expected frequency not the observed, but the expected frequency has to be at least 5. And there is no requirement that the observed frequency has to be at least 5, just expected. <coughs> so O, capital O, represents your observed frequency for each of the outcomes or categories. Big E represents the expected frequency of each outcome or category. K is the number of different categories. For instance, when you're rolling a die, the number of categories or outcomes is 6. Little n is the total number of trials. And this x squared looking thing, it represents the test statistic. It's actually called a, it's actually called chi squared. Chi squared. Test statistic. That x looking thing is actually the Greek letter chi, C-H-I. Still learning Greek to this day. Who are the hypotheses for the goodness of fit test? The null hypothesis is that the frequency counts agree with the claim distribution, so observed and expected frequencies equal each other, and then the alternative hypothesis is that the frequency counts do not agree with the claim distribution, so ob observed and expected frequencies are not equal to each other statistically significantly not equal to each other. And how do you calculate the test statistic? The chi-squared test statistic is found by taking the observed frequency and subtracting the expected frequency for each category, squaring that value, dividing by the expected frequency, and then adding up all of those values. We're not going to spend a lot of time or any time calculating the test statistic by hand. Just know that it is a little bit of work, but it's not impossible. Technology is going to calculate it for us. So how can we form a conclusion about our hypothesis test? Remember the p-value method. If the p-value is less than the significance level alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. There's also the critical value method. The critical value method will be, found, will be found from what is called a chi-square table using k minus 1 degrees of freedom. Number k is the number of outcomes or number of categories. And just FYI, a goodness of fit hypothesis test is always right-tailed because of the shape of the chi-square distribution. It's got this big peak and then it's got this tail that lingers off to the right. You'll see a picture of it in just a minute. And here's the criteria for the critical, math, critical value method. If the test statistic falls within the critical region, which is the region separated by the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. We will pretty much resort to the p-value method. All right, so if you have close agreement between the observed and expected frequencies, then you're going to get a small value of chi-squared of your test statistic and a large p-value. If you see large disagreement between observed and expected values, this will lead to a large value of chi-squared and a small p-value. So the two are inversely related to each other. If you have a large test statistic, you'll have a small p-value. If you have a large p-value, you'll have a small test statistic. <clears throat> so therefore, if you have a significantly large value of the test statistic, which means you have a really low p-value, it will cause rejection of the null hypothesis. So how will we do this? Well, in Google Sheets, we're going to go to the chi-square tab, and we'll type our information. It will be given to us in the form of a table. We'll pick the appropriate type of test, which is goodness of fit, and then 
It'll give us the information we need. So in our first example, there are five different categories with observed frequency of each category given. At a significance level of 0.05, we are actually going to test the claim that all five categories all occur with each of the following proportions. So out of all the observations, 0.3 of them or 3 tenths of them will be from category A. We expect that 0.1 from category B, 0.2 from C, 0.1 from D, and 0.3 from E. We'll conduct the hypothesis test. We will provide the test statistic, provide the critical value, provide the p-value, and we'll even state the conclusion. <clears throat> First stop is the hypotheses. The null hypothesis is that the frequency counts agree with the claim distribution. In other words, our observed frequencies equal our expected frequencies. That's our claim. We're trying to see if the expected frequencies, as broken down by the 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and 0 0.3, the proportions, agree with what we observed. The alternative is that the frequency counts do not agree with the claim distribution. Observed frequencies do not equal the expected frequencies. So what we need to do is we need to calculate the expected frequencies. <coughs> so it is expected that 0.3 of all of the observations will be from category A. Well, how many observations total do I have? What is the sum of the five numbers here? It's going to be 77. So out of those 77 observations, we should expect 0.3 of them, 3 tenths of them, to be category A. So you do 77 times 0.3, all round to the nearest whole number, and I get 23. <clears throat> Next order of business, you get 77 times 0.1 for category B, which is 8. You get 77 times 0.2 for category C, which is 15. Category D is 77 times 0.1 again, which is 8. And then category E is 77 times 0.3, which will give you 23. So we now have our expected frequencies. <clears throat> so now we're going to go through and we're going to find the test statistic, the critical value, the p-value, and then we're also going to state the conclusion. <clears throat> so I'm going to make some space here. I'm going to say, okay, make a spot for test statistic. Remember, it's represented by the symbol chi-squared, that's C-H-I squared. <clears throat> we're going to do critical value which is found from a table, and then we'll do p-value, which will be found from Google Sheets. Test statistic and p-value are found from Google Sheets. The critical value has to be found by finding the degrees of freedom, and the degrees of freedom is always going to be the number of categories, which we represent by the variable k, minus 1. In this case, you have five categories. You take away one to get four. So let's look at the chi-squared table to find the critical value. So you locate, I have a picture of the chi-squared distribution on top. Notice it is right-tailed. You locate the degrees of freedom along the left-hand side, so four. And then along the top, you find your significance level, 0 0.05. And look at where the row and column intersect. The critical value is just 9.49, so that's what separates the rest of the curve from the critical region or rejection region. So 9.49. Alright, so 9.49 it is. I always recommend just using that table. It's better than having to learn a new process in Google Sheets to find that critical value. Alright, so now let's actually work on the chi-square tab in Google Sheets. The chi-square tab will tell you the test statistic, it will tell you the p-value, it will also tell you degrees of freedom. It does not tell you critical value, though. That's why I say just use the table for the critical value. All right, so we'll go on an adventure to the Google Sheets document to the chi-square tab. You'll pick your type of test, which is currently goodness of fit. And then, literally, you type in your row categories. In column D, you type in your row categories where it says row 1 or whatever your spreadsheet currently says. Just put A, B, C, D, E. And then along row 1, 
where it says column one or where it says category one or whatever it may say. In cell E1, start typing your column headings for your table. So observed frequency and expected frequency. That's all you care about for this one. <clears throat> and then you fill in your numbers. So your very top left most knit top left most number in your table should start being typed in cell E2. So that's 23, 5, 14, 15, 20. Those are all of the observed frequencies. Then you're going to enter all the expected frequencies. So you're basically just replicating your table in the Google Sheets. Give it some time. It takes some time to calculate. Sometimes it'll do it quickly. Sometimes it'll do it in a very slow manner. But I think it's done. So you see your p-value, 0.1029, rounded to four decimal places just for you. And then you have your test statistic, which is 7.71. So we got all the important information we need. So the test statistic is 7.71. And then the p-value is 0.1029. So the easiest way to conduct this test is to compare the p-value to alpha. This is how you form your conclusion. And the p-value is clearly greater than alpha, so we fail to reject the null. And you should also get the same result if you compare the test statistic to the critical value. Compare the test statistic. That should be chi-squared, by the way. If you compare the test statistic to your critical value, 9.49, notice it is less than. If the test statistic is less than the critical value, that means fail to reject H0. I don't care what approach you use, but at the end of the day, make sure you know that you fail to reject the null hypothesis, which means you fail to reject the claim, meaning there is not sufficient evidence to reject the claim in this case. There is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that the frequency counts agree with the claim distribution or claim frequency. So that's one goodness of fit test example. How about another one? <laughs> a person drilled a hole in a die and filled it with a lead weight, then proceeded to roll it 200 times. Here are the observed frequencies for the outcomes of 1 through 6, and they list 29, 32, 46, 39, 26, 28, and they want you to use a 0 .10, 0 0.10 significance level to test the claim that the outcomes are not equally likely. Does it appear that the loaded die behaves differently than a fair die? Let's conduct the hypothesis test and provide the test statistic, the critical value, p-value, and state the conclusion. So here are the hypotheses. The null is that the frequency counts agree with the claim distribution, so observed frequencies will equal the expected frequencies. And then the alternative is that frequency counts do not agree with the claim distribution. So the observed frequencies are not equal to the expected. So to, the way we want to set up this test is that, okay, I rolled the die 200 times and I had all this information here, 29, 32, 46, 39. If that die were indeed fair, then overall every outcome should occur the same number of times. So if that die were fair, out of the 200 rolls, how much should I get of each number? What's 200 divided by 6? And we'll round to the nearest whole number. It's about 33. So everything should have an expected frequency of 33 if that die was indeed fair. So I'm trying to show that the observed frequencies differ than the expected frequencies. That's why my claim is the alternative hypothesis. All right, so now I'm going to go through and I'm going to find the test statistic, find the critical value, find the p-value, and we will even state the conclusion. <clears throat> so I'm going to make some room here for my test statistic my chi-squared test statistic. I will make some room for that critical value. Remember, 
degrees of freedom is number of categories minus 1, which 6 minus 1 is 5. And then I will make some space here for my p-value, and we'll see what that's equal to. All right, so the first stop will be we'll use the table. We'll look at 5 degrees of freedom and determine what the critical value is. Please note that alpha in this case is equal to 0.1. So we have five degrees of freedom. We had alpha 0.1, so the critical value is 9.24. Use the table to find the critical value. Right, so I have a critical value of 9.24. <clears throat> Let's go to Google Sheets now and type in this information so we can get the test statistic and the p-value. So column D, starting in cell D2, type each of your categories. You don't have to put your category or row category labels there, but it helps for the sake of organization. Then I have observed and expected frequencies. Then start typing your data in E2. So I'm typing my data in cell E2, and then F2 I'm going to type my expected frequencies, which is 33s down the column, and give your Google Sheets spreadsheet some time to calculate. It'll do all the magic for you, and it'll show you a test statistic chi-square of 8.97 and a p-value of 0 0.1103. So, 8.97, and that's 0 0.1103. Remember, the easiest comparison approach is to compare that p-value to alpha. The p-value is greater than alpha, so that means we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And you can also compare the test statistic to the critical value, 9.24. It's less than the critical value. In that case, that also means fail to reject the null hypothesis. Remember, two different methods, you should always get the same result though. So that means I fail to reject the null. So sad. So that means I can't say anything about the claim. I can't say anything about the alternative. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that the outcomes are not equally likely. So basically it appears that the loaded die behaves the same as a fair die. So you might want to retry your weighted dice making skills. So that's all I have for now for goodness of fit test. Thanks for watching.